So, good afternoon. Today we are going to discuss the laparoscopic tubal surgery. In this presentation, we are not including the ovarian surgery. Ovarian surgery is a little big topic, which is separately we have the laparoscopic management of the ovarian disease is a separate presentation, which I will discuss later. In this presentation, we are only concerned about the tube, fallopian tube. Tube has four part, one is isthmic part, another is interst interstitial part, third is the ampullary part, fourth is the infundibular part. Interstitial part is must mostly used for tubal sterilization, it is a good part for recanalization as well. The interstitial is also called as intramural, this is isthmus part sorry. And Ampular part is more important for ectopic because maximum number of the ectopic is in the ampular part. Infindular is also called as fimbrial part. It has three ligament. One is proper ovarian ligament, other is infundibulo ovarian ligament, and the last is infundibulo pelvic ligament. And it has two mesentery nearby. One is major ovarian, other is major salpings. So, whenever you are doing the surgery, you have to define these three ligaments and you should must consider the major salpings and major variants separately. If you see the three dimensional vision, this is tube, this is major salpings and anterior peritoneum of the major salpings continues as the anterior leaf of the broad ligament and then it joins the UV fold. And posterior peritoneum of the major ovarian continue as a retroperitoneum. And then just below this retroperitoneum here is ureter. Most of the time in the healthy uterus and the resting uterus without uterine manipulated, fimbria of the tube is resting over the ureter and separated by the peritoneum. Blood supply, you have two blood supply, one is ascending uterine, this ascending uterine branch once it comes near the proper ovarian ligament, it gives three branches, one branch go to the uterus, another branch go to the major salpings, another branch go to major ovarian and exactly same way ovarian artery which is a branch of direct branch of the aorta which comes through the infundibular pelvic ligament as this level of the infundibular ovarian ligament it gets two branches one go to the major ovarian other go to major salpings and then it anastomose. Why I am telling you this? Why it is necessary to know? Already you are a qualified gynecologist you do not need to learn it, but my purpose of discussing it is that there are two complication in laparoscopy which happens more in laparoscopy compared to open. One complication is devascularization of the ovary and other complication is uteroperitoneal fistula. In laparoscopy we always we have discussed that we use a lot of energy and 2 to 4 percent chances are there that if you are doing ovarian cystectomy or salpingectomy and if you are coagulating too nearer to the uterus or too nearer to the infundibular pelvic ligament by the collateral damage you can injure the main branch of the ovarian and uterine. So, there will be revascularization of the ovary patient has the hydrosalpings or ectopic pregnancy and you have done salpingectomy. But after that patient has stopped the menses, reason being the ovary is revascularized. Why? Excessive use of the current and collateral damage. So, this is one complication. Other complication if you are coagulating too nearer to the uterus and if you are cutting the tube near the uterus, then the uterus is a muscular organ which cannot contract and cannot seal. So, sometimes there is a spontaneous communication being established in between the uterine cavity and peritoneal cavity. This is called as uteroperitoneal fistula. So, that is why a small stump should be left behind the uterus while you are doing salpingectomy. If you want to coagulate it, coagulate it from here. What will be the advantage? That ovarian branch of uterine will not be damaged. And if you coagulate little away from the tube, 
Then another advantage what will happen that this tube will seal fibrosis will occur and then uteroperitoneal fistula does not have any chance to develop. Exactly same way when you are removing the tube fimbrial end of the tube or infundibular end of the tube when you are removing it at that time you should not go destroy the proper infundibulo ovarian ligament you should only cut the infundibulo ovarian not infundibulo pelvic. So, you should remain near the tube and that way devascularization can be avoided and uteroperitoneal fistula is avoided. It does not happen in open surgery that is why you must not have heard it during your MSMD program because in open surgery we use a suture and we ligate it. So, it is guaranteed that the tube will close and we use the hemostasis only when there is a bleeding otherwise we cut it. So, that is why it happens more in laparoscopy especially due to the excessive use of the current. Now, first surgery which we will discuss about the tube is the ectopic pregnancy as we know that 99 percent of the cases of the ectopic pregnancy happens inside the tube and in that approximately 64 percent is in the ampulla, 25 percent is in the isthmus, 9 percent in the infundibular and 2 percent in the intramural or interstitial. Rarely it may be intraligamental ovarian abdominal that is 0 0.5, 0 0.1 these are the incidence of these occurrence. So, this is the topographic anatomy and OT setup is patient head should be 30 degree head down you will be standing opposite to the pathology monitor will be placed at this side one assistant will be uh, left to you and one assistant will be in between the leg for uterine manipulation monitor ideally it should be pushed on the opposite side or you can put in between the leg also if it is one monitor. If you have a two then once this side and one that side you can put it for either side and this way this is the normal OT setup which you can use for the procedure and uh, it is according to baseball diamond concept there is nothing extra although because of the mobility you can use sometime ipsilateral also or sometime contralateral just like the same how we have seen right now. Access will be according to your choice you can use various needle you can use the open technique you can use a Scandinavian technique you can use the VG port you can anything you want harmonic or port position is according to contralateral or ipsilateral. Identification of ureter is very important for any gynae surgery either you are doing TLH or anything see this is fimbria which is sitting over and enjoying the movement of ureter. So, always it sits over there is one hypothesis that ureteric peristalsis helps the egg to get propelled towards the fimbria also and here you can see the fimbria is sitting over the ureter. This is iliac vessel and it is at right angle crossing the iliac vessel and that has to be taken care of when you will get a atraumatic grasper and you will lift the infant pelvic ligament you can identify the ureter rising on the broad ligament and sometime even if you can identify here this is uterosacral ligament and you see this is the peristalsis of the ureter and it is approximately 2.5 centimeter lateral to the uterosacral ligament near the cervix. So, this is uterosacral and here is the ureter going. So, this has to be very carefully taken if you will see if you will examine then there is less likelihood you will injure during the TLH and all. If you will put a stent inside this then seeing the ureter is very easy because it becomes so dilated that even your grasper can touch it and the incidence of the ureteric injury can be minimized by the routine use of the DJ stent into insertion in the ureter. But controversy is this that at what cost because if routinely you are putting the DJ stent then it has its own complication of increasing the UTI some patient they will not keep on coming to you due to TLH, but they will keep on coming with the pus cell in the urine and the cystitis and the burning urination and the cost is also increased. So, that is why it is not mandatory it is up to you some people they prefer some people they know. In the tubal surgery there are two options you have salpingectomy as well as salpingectomy especially for ectopic. Now, one of the criteria of selecting salpingectomy and salpingectomy is diameter of the trophoblast as well as beta HCG level. 
if the diameter of the trophoblast is more than 6 centimeter in the diameter, there is no point doing salpingotomy, because that tube is no more functional, it is destroyed. So, better to remove the tube. And if beta HCG is more than 15000 international unit, then also we should do the destructive management, we should not try to save the tube. This criteria is valid in the open as well as laparoscopy. But for laparoscopy alone, poly, one of the gynecologist poly has given one poly score. And according to poly, laparoscopically we should also take care of the previous history and the laparoscopy. Like if it is previous history of a topic, it carries two point. If tubal microsurgery, it carries two point. If unique tube, it carries two point. If salpingitis, it carries one point. If it is ipsilateral adhesion, then one point. If it is a contralateral adhesion, then one point. And you will calculate all the points. If all the points are just one into three, you should do salpingotomy. That is conservative management. If these points are four, then salpingectomy. And if it is more than four, then ipsilateral salpingectomy and contralateral tubal ligation. Just like a patient comes with a salpingitis one side, other side ectopic and there is few adhesions also. Then we should not do salpingotomy, we should do the salpingectomy one side, other side tubal ligation and send the patient for IVF, because there is a high chance of recurrent ectopic if you will try to save the tube. And anyway tubal causes of infertility is more, so better is to sacrifice the tube and patient the send for IVF. But this criteria that is called as poly criteria is only valid in USA. Generally in India patient consent and family and the you know the cost of the uh, IVF is too much. You cannot uh, remove the disease tube and remove the healthy tube also. Then patient I think will not be very happy. They will say who has told you I was ready to take the risk. I was ready to take the again ectopic. It is not guaranteed that next time ectopic happens. So, it was a fear. So, this is very carefully otherwise you will be in trouble. I, I still remember that uh, one of the uh, our IVF expert has referred one patient for bilateral uh, tubal ligation for a cases of hydrosalpings and we did it. We did it tube we ligated. I told that we should remove it then no he requested that you have to ligate and we ligated and 6, 7 time of the IVF was failed. And after that, four years later, the patient came back and they said that now they want recanalization. And you will be surprised, we did recanalization, and he told that Baba Ramdev has told that we will give you some medicine, and if you recanalize, you will get pregnant. And it happens also, we recanalize and she got pregnant. <laughs> so, what to do? It is very difficult, and sometimes it is important to keep in mind that patient consent is very important. So, poly -S score is not practical in the India, it is generally in the USA. Why USA? Because they have no problem with the IVF and good facilities are there. Now, if you are doing salpingotomy, then you have two options, one is salpingotomy, another is salpingostomy. So, generally salpingostomy is done more, where you will cut the tube, you do not need to suture, but suppose it is 3 centimeter then you have to approximate. Tomorrow, you will do salpingostomy. So, you have to cut the tube, this will be first surgery tomorrow, you have to do tubal ligation, we will give you fallop ring, you will apply. After that, you have to do salpingotomy, you will cut it, although ectopic will not come out from the tube, but you will suture it. So, you will do, so that your practice of suturing and salpingotomy also will be there. So, if it is 10 to 15 millimeter trophoblast only, then salpingostomy can be performed. Now, here this is a ectopic, this is a Babcock type of grasper and this is a spinal needle. And now, you can put the spinal needle on the major salpings and inject it, 5 international unit of vasopressin should be diluted with the 20 ml saline. Vasopressin is available in the market by the name of petricin and petricin um, is uh, uh, actually one ampoule is containing 5 ml and one ml has uh, 5 international unit. So, one ampoule you can dilute with the 100 ml saline and after that you will inject it just near the highest dilated part of ectopic, not on the broad ligament over the major salpings and then you will see the blabing and here it is blabing. And now 
it is good. If it is blabbing, you should smile. If it is not blabbing, you should see the face of your anesthetist who might be crying. Because if you will go to the vein directly, patient get tachycardia, pulmonary hypertension and other problems. So, you have to be make it sure that it should not be directly going into the any vein and after that you should wait for 5 minutes that will create transient ischemia and that will continue up to 20 minutes time it will give you. Even in the myomectomy you can use 20 minutes time. Now, the question is adrenaline has some problem yes adrenaline can kill your patient also that is why in the USA it is not approved. US FDA has not approved the use of adrenaline sorry vasopressin for these regions for the salpingectomy salpingectomy or even for the myomectomy if you and that is why because few percentage of the complication is already reported that is why they do not recommend. So, you will uh, search and then you will find out if you will just put in the Google USA FDA not approved vasopressin then you will get it. Anyway, we will continue this we will see later. So, you have to inject very very carefully that it should have only the transient effect it should not have the systematic effect. Other question is can I use adrenaline? No, never use adrenaline. Adrenaline has a problem that it has a rebound bleeding. So, up to 20 up to 20 second it is ok, but after that it gives you rebound bleeding. So, that is why it should not be used and you should wait for few second time and after that you will start doing cutting it. Now, question is how to cut, how much to cut, where to cut. When you have to cut it, you should cut the anti mesentric border of the tube. You should not cut the mesentric border, you should cut the anti mesentric border of the tube. And then how much to cut, you should cut equal to the trophoblast. If the trophoblast is 10 millimeter, you cut 10 millimeter, trophoblast is 20 millimeter, you cut 20 millimeter, trophoblast is 30 millimeter you cut 30 millimeter, tofobas is 40 millimeter then do not cut, then better to go for salpingectomy. So, because you 30, 40, 50 millimeter that much diameter of the trophoblast is useless to uh, preserve the tube, because recurrent ectopic chances are also more and the viability of the tube is in question. So, you should cut approximately equal to the diameter of the trophoblast, another thing is with which instrument to cut? You should use a sharpest instrument available that is tritome or aspiration needle. Do not use hook because hook you will use collateral damage will be more and the chances of uh, union of the tube will be in question. Now, question is if I will cut it uh, with the tritome will it not bleed? Yes, it will bleed that is why you have injected the vasopressin. So, if the bleeding is the fear then the salpingotomy cannot be performed. And sometime after salpingotomy, if excessive bleeding is started, you may have to remove the tube. So, that is why never give a consent, take a consent of the never give this that promise to the patient that you will do salpingotomy. You always take a consent for <coughs> salpingotomy. If you can save the tube, it is good news for the patient. You can tell. An anti mesentric border has advantage 90 percent of the time trophoblast is implanted over the anti mesosalpingeal border. So, if you will cut it here you can suck the trophoblast out and it will be removed. Suppose you will cut 9 o'clock <coughs> or 3 o'clock position there will be hematosalpings only blood will come out real trophoblast can be missed. So, what to do you hold it lift it, this is tritone, just cut the anti mesentric border of the tube, 10 to 15 millimeter incision can be given, then take the knife in, put knife is withdrawn and this will start now sucking use the suction mild suction purpose of suction is just to hold the trophoblast and slowly keep on pulling and it will abort
it is out. So, this is very simple just you do not may not need to suture it if it is only 10 to 15 millimeter and then you can do thorough suction and irrigation. Now, the contraindications absolute contraindication is if more than 6 centimeter in the diameter and if HCG level is 15000 international unit or more relative contraindications of the conservative management conservative management means salpingotomy relative contraindications are cases with the poor pregnancy prognosis and severe adhesion weekly HCG also has to be monitored until undetected. Now, salpingectomy, salpingectomy is easier than salpingotomy because it is a destructive. This patient has the right side of unruptured ectopic and she has a previous history of one more ectopic that is why this is open surgery was done previous time and there is a adhesion. So, this is a ipsilateral port position and this is doing adhesiolysis. We never know in which surgery you have to do adhesiolysis. Even as a gynecologist, you enter and first few minutes you have to do adhesiolysis. So, this is omentum. How to know it is omentum? Omentum looks like a tree or a wall, whereas if it is bubble, bubble looks like a flyover which has a broad base. Another is color, omentum is yellow, bubble will be pink. Another is the peristalsis that also, and then ascending into loop is dilated in the bubble and the descending is collapsed, but in omentum it looks like a tree or a wall. So, easily you can differentiate and if it is omentum it you do not have to fear at all. You can use any energy source you can use bipolar, harmonic, ligature and then adhesiolysis can be performed. Once it is done after that successive desiccation and dissection, successive desiccation and dissection. What is desiccation? Desiccation is a coagulation current with firm contact. So, coagulation is of two type one is desiccation another is fulgration and cutting is also from two type one is pure cut another is blend cut. So, this is desiccation with the bipolar and take care that successive desiccation and dissection and other grasper is pulling the tube, but you have to make it sure that this is the infundulo pelvic ligament and this is infundulo ovarian ligament. So, only infundulo ovarian ligament should be cooked infundulo pelvic ligament should not be touched otherwise ovary blood supply will be compromised and then slowly successive dissection and dissection. So, it is sorry sorry slowly slowly you will keep on cutting it take care that major ovarian this is major ovarian major ovarian should not get damaged and when you are coming to the medial part of the tube a small portion of the tube should be coagulated before cutting. So, that it will seal and there will be no any chance of uteroperitoneal fistula and then this tube is out with the ectopic. So, it is much easier to do the salpingectomy because it is a you can use energy, but in salpingectomy you cannot use energy you have to do the chemical ischemia because if you use the energy then the tube is destroyed. So, now you can hold it by the cloth forcep and you can pull it with the 10 millimeter grasper. So, in many cases of the unruptured ectopic if especially the many people they prefer salpingectomy over salpingotomy because salpingotomy has one more fear that accidentally if the trophoblast is left inside suppose you have taken some clot and real trophoblast was undisturbed then also it is a medical legal issue because patient can sue us that you have not done. You are not you are not uh, responsible for the function of the tube, but you are responsible for taking it completely if you have done the laparoscopy. So, this way you should remain as nearer as possible to the tube and a small portion of the stump of the tube has been left towards the uterus. So, that you can go medial to lateral as well as lateral to medial. So, this is uterus this is remaining tube and then remaining is cutting rest of the tube is getting cut. Now, sometime you might have a very small tubal cyst like the para ovarian cyst or this type of cyst here it is too small this is tube. Now, in those situation you can make a simple measures not this is only 2.5 centimeter a small cyst and you can do two port, but you can make a Melger's knot and you can go with the knot and you can hang it around and tie the knot. So, you can make a rudders or Melger's and here it is going and then you can go beyond the tissue here the ovary and there is no any third port there is no any third port there is only two port. 
and then you can tie the knot at the tip, but do not cut the suture, keep the suture and then by the side of the suture put the scissors, keep the suture because suture will act as your third port because it is giving you the counter and by the side of this suture you put the scissors and it is cut. So, you do not need any energy source because knot is used and then the cyst is separated. After that cut the and then you aspirate and bring it out because if you will try to hold it, it will slip. So, aspiration has to be done either in the beginning or at the end. Ovarian cystectomy by laparoscopy cannot be considered without aspiration. If you have to do it, better to do open because if you do not aspirate, you have to enlarge the incision and you have to enlarge the incision. Sometime you can put into the endo bag and then you can puncture inside the endo bag. Then also there is no any guarantee that it will not spill. A spillage cannot be guaranteed in laparoscopy. Now, this is aspiration needle but never use current, current you know it is a rule in laparoscopy that any structure which is already detached from the body, you should not use current because now the current will try to jump to the bubble and it will perforate because its original attachment is no there. So, it will try to find out some other alternative and that is why you have to be very careful that only mechanically you can puncture it not the by current. So, now it is punctured and then it will be sucked and after that it will come out easily. So, in many situation it will be very funny surgery and, and you may have gone inside for diagnostic laparoscopy, but incidental findings sometime if it is found you can remove it also. Sometime patient comes with the full fledged bilateral salpingo cystectomy for the hydrosalpings. This is a striker mini alligator this is a beautiful instrument which is used and you can lift it like that and this is a hydrosalpings and blocked tube. So, before IVF it was planned to remove this is infundibulo pelvic ligament this is infundibulo ovarian ligament can you see the difference this is and this is ovary. So, you should start cutting from here you should not start here if you want to preserve the function of the tube uh, ovary. If you want to do salpingo ophrectomy then you can you have to apply here if you want to do salpingectomy but if you want to do only salpingectomy then remain towards the tube so it is very easy you can do with the harmonic you can do with the simple uh, bipolar so this is infundibulo ovarian ligament and slowly it is coagulating Now, it is reached there and then this is a bipolar you can coagulate two three times and this is harmonic now it is cutting leaving 6 millimeter towards the uterus and it is done. Now, keep it in the cul de sac. and then the same striker mini alligator can hold to the other side. This side is tubo ovarian mass also because of PID sometimes these type of cases happen. Then you can take the again here fimbrial end is adhered with the ovary. So, that is why tube is a split because ovary should not be destroyed unnecessarily if you will a small portion of the fimbria if it is attached to the ovary it will not harm once it is disconnected with the remaining tube it will get atrophy after that you can give the medial traction. So, that a proper plane should be achieved and slowly the tube will be removed without destroying and compromising any of the blood supply of the ovary. <coughs>
so which is now infinitely over n is done now this is major salpings and slowly slowly you will reach now near the uterus little bipolar is applied so that it can seal better and then with the harmonic you can remove the tube so these type of surgeries are very rewarding but patient has to go for ivf and that is better outcome if the disease tube is removed now you can do the further suction and after that you have to change the telescope now this is 5 mm telescope that is that's why vision is not good and then you will hold with a 10 mm and bring it out so these type of procedures can be performed in the tube another type of procedure which is very common you can do salpingo ophrectomy this is a <coughs> again rupture ectopic and there is a lot of blood inside so you will use hyperanized saline 5000 international unit of hyperin should be diluted with the 500 ml of normal saline and then dilute the area and then suck it while you are sucking you have to use mild suction and clot should also be broken clot should be broken in the small small pieces you should try to heat it also sometime to break and from the posterior caldi sac you should try to suck it out anterior caldi sac and then posterior you try and manipulate it if you are using in ectopic you have to use very carefully because even if the ectopic is in the tube uterus becomes soft because of hormone ch changes so sometime there is a possibility that you can perforate the uterus also so now you can just hold it and you can suck and then again uterine manipulate will be introduced and then antiversion and contralateral this is again a striker mini alligator so that will make your surgery two port surgery it will not be called as three port only two ports are there because a striker mini alligator is not a port it is going percutaneously and it is invisible because it is 1.5 mm skin prick and now this is salpingectomy this is ovary this is down here there this is ovary o this one is ovary and this is the tube is left a small portion and then slowly 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 you will go this is this was a ampullary pregnancy which is ruptured and it is adhered with the ovary so ovary wants to seal it whenever there is a rupture ovary omentum and tube all wants to seal it anyhow to prevent the bleeding so in those situation there will be a lot of adhesions also many a time sometime you will get chronic ectopic in those situation there is a repeated bleeding and a stop again bleeding and a stop because of the adhesion and the sealing effect of the surrounding in those situation it will be very difficult to manage the surgery and sometime you may have to do salpingo ophrectomy completely in those bad tube over here mass or if it is completely stuck there so this is now this is the remaining major salpings and this tube is separated okay, as you can see it is adhered with the ovary ovary is not giving it up it is stuck so slowly slowly you will separate it and adhesive lysis will be performed and now the entire trophoblast together with the tube will be removed and it is done now this is a lot of adhesions down there and that was the ruptured part and here these clots were due to the adhesion so with the tip of the suction you should scrub it out all the clots should be scratched away from the ovarian fossa and then you should suck and irrigate repeated suction irrigation is required this tube is good this ovary looks good so this is done and now this this part is scratched then you can use a endo bag because in those situation this is a gloves this is a economical way of removing the tissue that is a gloves and to back because it is friable if you will try to pull it out from one of the port it will break in the small pieces and it will be lost in the abdominal wall here and there so because it is trophoblast with the clots with the broken tube so you should put it into endo bag and then take it out if it is a simple ovarian cyst it is too strong it will not break if it is gall bladder it is strong you can take it out but in those cases it has to sometime in the appendix also if it is a fecolith 
then you should must use endo bag. Actually, in reality, any tissue retrieval should be done in the endo bag, but due to the cost factor, sometimes we don't use it, and then it is taken out. So, this way salpingoflectomy. Sometimes you have a very bad vision because of rupture ectopic. This is active bleeding. There is a left sided rupture ectopic and there is a active bleeding. So, again, hyperanized saline is done and all the blood is sucked out. Blood has two problems. One problem there is possibility of going into the shock, patient can go to the shock. Another problem is there will be a lot of clot that you have to use hyperanized. Third problem it will create bad vision. Here, this is ligature, this is the infundibular ovarian ligament, and this is ligature. Do you know harmonic is a worse instrument for active bleeding? If anywhere there is active bleeding, suppose you try and start a spurt like active bleeding, then harmonic is a worse instrument because as soon as you will go near the blood, it will start fountaining the blood. Because it is a vibration, just like in the water when we are putting, it was fountaining the water. Because it will start spraying the water, so uh, that it can even the swell your tip of the telescope. So that's why in active bleeding, like as your is good. Here, this is active bleeding, so you can coagulate, and this bleeding can stop because once the blood supply is no more. Bleeding can stop, then you can go lateral to medial and slowly, slowly you can cut as nearer as possible to the tube. So, this is still still little little bleeding, but you can immediately finish it. With the experience, even the very difficult cases of ectopic, you can manage laparoscopically. But during the learning curve, initially you should try to get the patient who has very less than 500 ml blood. If it is more than 1.5 liter of hemoperitoneum, laparoscopy should be avoided because there is a possibility of going into the shock. We all know that abdominal cavity has minimum how much capacity? 1.5 liter and maximum 6 liter. So, 1.5 liter already blood is there. So, where I will put my gas? Once you put the various needle, blood has started coming from the various needle itself. Once you attach the insufflator, insufflator will taint, 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 it will show you high pressure because gas cannot accommodate without taking the blood out. So, in those situations, if you have experience, you can do immediate suction. If you have a high pressure, high flow insufflator, it can do, otherwise it is disturbing. Now, this is 10 mm claw forcep and then this ectopic is out. Once the ectopic is taken out, after that you should inspect the color of the ovary also. That should not be blue, it should be good and then proper suction and irrigation should be performed. Drain is not necessary, but if you have a slightest doubt about the rebleeding, you can use a drain. So, this is a posterior cul-de-sac which is sucked and now you can introduce a drain. Color of the ovary is fine, it is not bad and then you can use a nasogastric tube as a drain inside. So, repeated suction irrigation, now the color is very good and then a drain is introduced. Lift the uterus, put the nasogastric tube and then drop the uterus by uterine manipulator. So, that with the weight of the uterus itself, nasogastric tube will remain in the position and then next day you can remove it if it nothing is coming out. So, this way you can do the rupture ectopic. Sometimes you have an infundibular ectopic in which you can try to abort it. You can take a suction irrigation and one atraumatic grasper, you can try to press it and abort it. If it is not coming, then you can use a pre tied loop extracorporeal knot, you can tie on the fimbria and cut it out. But in majority of the time, it can be aborted, infundibular ectopic. Now, sometimes salpingo variolysis also you can perform same way. Contraindication of laparoscopic absolute contraindication is shock or interstitial pregnancy. In interstitial pregnancy, problem is that ectopic is so deep in the muscle that if you cut it, you will be lost somewhere and excessive bleeding is started. So, in those situations, many people what they do, they go with the aspiration needle and they inject the methotrexate locally there in that part of the swelling of the uterus. So, that it will destroy then and there only, but other part it should be better to avoid or hysteroscopically you can perform. 
Other relative contraindications are obesity, severe adhesion and large hemoperitoneum, large hemoperitoneum where these are relative contraindication. Two complications are particularly important, one is endometriosis that is stump endometriosis because of uteroperitoneal fistula can happen, re-established spontaneous communication and uteroperitoneal fistula and other complication is devascularization. So, these two complications you can always you can minimize if you will just take care that you are not using the excessive use of current. If you will use the excessive use of current, it will be a problem. So, these two things you have to keep in mind. Now, post operative follow up is very important. Just next day after the surgery, HCG level should be 10 percent of the pre operative value. Suppose today was 10,000, then tomorrow should be 1,000. That means, surgery is guaranteed. You did surgery today, beta HCG tomorrow, 10 percent of the pre operative value. If it is only 20 percent monitoring, if it is only 30 percent extinct monitoring, and if it is only 40 percent, that means failure. So, beta HCG was 10,000 today and tomorrow it is 5,000. That means, immediate methotrexate has to be started. Sometime what happens, trophoblast is near the mesosalpinx, you cut the anti-mesentic border of the tube, you just suck the blood out and you are happy that I have taken everything. Just like how it happens in MTP sometime, missed abortion and this that. Exactly same way trophoblast is not disturbed and beta HCG is little going down, but again it will be high. So, immediate methotrexate 50 milligram per meter square of body dose, normal Indian girls their body surface area is 1 meter square. So, 50 milligram is sufficient ideally half half should be given in each buttock. So, that less tissue necrosis will be there and better outcome will be there. And after that you can do the remaining portion and uh, regime already you know it is single dose also weekly also and one day methotrexate another day folinic acid and that way you can perform and you can give. So, thank you very much this was regarding the tubal surgery. Is there any question? Do you know hydro dissection is only necessary if there is already big trophoblast and the blood clots are not coming. Then after suction, you will introduce the suction irrigation inside and then irrigate just like the ENT surgeon how they clean the wax in the ear, you will do hydro dissection and then it will come out. Sometime if that also is not doing then with the atraumatic grasper, you have to do slight milking. So, that is also good, hydro dissection is also good, but if you can suck it out, then there is a always a chance to bring it out complete in one go as one. Sucking is not you are not using suction to suck it inside the suction. Suction is doing to just like a suction delivery. Suction is doing to hold the trophoblast and gentle pulling entire trophoblast can come complete end block, but hydro dissection if it is broken. If it is broken and become piecemeal then you do hydro dissection and all the things come out with the irrigation. No, if the already bed has already that much big vessels, if the cardiac activity is started, if the bed has a good vascularization, then beta HCG will go more than 15,000. And in those situations, you know, yeah. transient ischemia by vasopressin does not work. Due to just decrease the bleeding from the bed, just near the bed, you have given the vasopressin, is not it? and vasopressin has this role only. So, that within 20 minutes it will not bleed and winning of vasopressin is slow. In adrenaline there is a rebound bleeding, once the effect goes there is a rebound bleeding, here it is winning of is slow. So, that will not create rebound bleeding. No, that will not work because blood supply is coming from Magentic side, it will not work because it is just or more dilating the tube. So, directly anti magentic never put it there. Our even in the myoma, we are putting to the base where the feeding vessels are coming at that place. In myoma, we inject 200 ml also, 300 ml also, because in myoma, our purpose is hydro dissection. But in ectopic, hydro dissection is not the purpose, purpose is ischemia. 
because it is already under tension to rupture and come out. Ectopic as soon as you cut anti mesentric it has a maximum tendency to abort spontaneously without your effort because already tube is ready to rupture it is under tension, but if you want you can do that. 